Hello, welcome to Cycling Tips. Dave here, and we've got a new video series for you this week. CT Recommends, or at least it's a new video series. We have done it as an article before, but we thought it's perfect content for that audio-visual format. It's basically a rundown of the bits and pieces the staff here at CT use daily. We do get to test some very nice bits and pieces, but there's certain items that we stick to, certain items we've found that we love. You may have seen the articles over on the website. We've done rain jackets, we've done the stuff that we stuff, the stuff that we, the stuff that we stuff in our saddlebags. Helmets, shoes and pedals, which is what this video is all about. There is obviously only a few major players in the road pedal seat, but there's only a few on this list. The question is who's missing off the list? Who do most of us use here at Cycling Tips? And who are the underdogs that are doing a pretty good job? Well, this week I've harassed our tech editors James and Dave to tell us about the pedals they use. Oh, and I also talked to uh, Kaylee, editor-in-chief, because, well, let's just say he uses a brand of pedal, not for the technical qualities, but because, well, you'll find out. There's a whole bunch of reasons why a lot of the Cycling Tip staff chose Shimano SPD SL pedals as our road pedal of choice. Now, they're not necessarily the lightest or the flashiest or you know, the most anything really. But the reason why a lot of us like them is because they just work. They are light enough, they're quite stable, the rotation is pretty smooth and there's enough of it. And if you don't want more of it, there are different cleat options to choose from. The cleats themselves are pretty inexpensive and they're easy to walk in and they last a really long time. And the thing is, no matter which SPD SL pedal you go with, the performance really doesn't change a whole lot aside from the weight. Now, uh, you do get upgrades in kind of like the body construction and how big or small they are. Uh, the bearings can be a little bit easier or harder to service, but they are all serviceable with pretty much normal tools. Um, and the thing is, even though they are serviceable, I've never really felt the need to have to service these a whole lot. So basically, they just work. You don't have to mess with them, and that's kind of why we like them. Now, in that original CT Recommends article, I also had a little footnote on Times Expresso pedals, and this is a previous generation version. Um, I have a new set that are actually on a bike right now, but uh, the reason why I'm so intrigued with these is because they are really, really light. I mean, they're literally just about half the weight of a comparable Shimano pedal. Um, and what's even better is that that weight doesn't really change a whole lot as you move down in the price range. So even though you can pick up a relatively entry-level set of Time Expresso pedals, they're still really, really super light. Uh, the other thing that's pretty cool about them is that they have a really wide platform, the rotation is really nice and fluid, and they have this nifty little preload mechanism whereby, you know, when you clip out of the pedal, the gate on the back is kind of held open just a little bit. It makes for a really, really easy engagement. And yet you can still get out of them pretty easily. The cleats do wear out a little bit faster, so you have to keep that in mind. That, you know, those costs will add up eventually, um, but overall, you know, my, really my only caveat at the time was I w wasn't really sure how well these bearings would hold up. I mean, the bearing technology on these definitely is not as advanced as what you see in a Shimano pedal. Uh, and also these aren't nearly as serviceable, mainly because although this collar is removable, technically time doesn't really make that tool available and it is a special tool that's required. So if and when these pedals go south, it's kind of up in the air whether or not you'd have to replace the whole pedal, which is kind of a bummer. So in terms of performance, these are probably my best pick now, but still in terms of a day-to-day -day pedal, Shimano SPD SL, for me at least, is still the way to go. Cheers, James. There's a man who must have several pairs of shoes because I know I couldn't be faffing around with changing my cleats every time I wanted to go out. Right, let me just interrupt this video for 30 seconds to tell you about Cycling Tips Velo Club. It's a membership program we have here where if you appreciate what we do, whether it's me jabbering on like this, the fantastic articles on the website, the photography, the other videos that we have out on our YouTube channel, and you want to support us in our mission to help bringing you more content like that, then why not check out Velo Club? It is linked in the description below, and there's the address. There is obviously perks for joining as well, but I won't go on about them. The only one you need to know is that every morning you wake up and look at that website you'll get that warm feeling that you know you're helping us achieve our goals trust me it'll make your life better all right i won't bang on too much just check out the link below back to the pedals let's throw you over to dave who's got a pedal that well has surprised me lately i've been testing a pair of the favero asioma asioma 
Asioma? Favera Asioma pedals, uh, which are a power meter pedal and they're Bluetooth and AMP Plus compatible. And I wanted to test them because I just wanted to know how they performed as actual pedals. Uh, from a PAL meter point of view, they've been well established. The guys uh, DC Rainmaker and GP Llama both love them and use them as benchmark PAL meters. Uh, but for me, I wanted to know like, could it replace my regular go-to pedal and give me power without any real sacrifice. And that's something that I don't think power meter pedals of the past have been able to do. Guys like Power Tap or even the early Garmin's, they always had like these, you know, these bulky items that, that gave you the power basically. So, you know, in the case of the Garmin Vector, there was a pod that sat on the outside. It wasn't the most reliable thing either. So that's something that I wanted to test out with the new Favera Asiomo pedals. Um, they're actually uh, just a pedal that are built on an Exusta platform. So it's a well-proven sealed bearing pedal. It uses the Look Keo cleat. Um, so, you know, there's nothing too groundbreaking with this design, but the way they've implemented the power into it is just very simple. It's very easy to use. It just installs with an eight millimeter Allen key. Uh, so far, they've been incredibly easy to get along with. You know, there was a slight tricky bit with uh, how you have to register them to get them to register power. But other than that, it's just been a reliable addition to the bike. And it's probably the most pleasant uh, power meter I've used to date. But that's not the only pedal he's been using. All right, so back to my all time favorite, which is right now it's the Shimano Durace pedal. The current edition is what I use. And I specified Durace. I've got no issue with the cheaper model Shimanos. I'll happily use a 105 and Altegra pedal. What a lot of people don't understand is that when you spend more on a Durace, it's not just about the few grams. There's actually a lot going on inside of the pedal. So Durace actually gains a slimmer spindle and uses a needle bearing, whereas uh, lower end pedals don't have such a thing. And that needle bearing actually allows them to slim down the body of the pedal, uh, which improves the, the lean angle, but it also lowers the stack height. It's really a small difference, but it is still a difference. And it's nice to know that when you pay more for a product, it's not just purely about grams. There is some performance benefit there. Personally, I also use Shimano SPD pedals. I've been a long time user. Previously, many moons ago, I did use the old Look Delta pedals. You remember them things? But once I jumped over to Shimano SPDs, there was no turning back. And I use them for pretty much the exact reasons everybody else or most of us here at CT uses them for. The durability is incredible. In fact, I've got a pair of, I think, Durace pedals on my personal bike that I've been on there for probably about five years and the bearings are only needing servicing now. That either says they're very durable or I don't do many miles. Right, next up, I'll throw you over to Kaylee Fretz, Editor-in-Chief, with, well, a different brand of pedal. Good morning, Dave. You've caught me early in the morning here. I'm gonna go down and show you my pedals. This right here is a handful of Look Keo Blade pedals. Now I would love to say that I picked these for some technical reason because they're light, which they are, or they're durable, which I've actually found them to be quite durable. But the reality is actually that as part of a project uh, about four or five years ago, we were testing a bunch of bikes at once and we needed pedals. We didn't have to swap the pedals all the time and look sent over about 15 pairs of these. And so I have 15 pairs of them. And that's why I ride look pedals, but they're great. I do recommend them. Never had any issues, never broken any. Uh, they are surprisingly durable, even though they have these little carbon doohickeys in the bottom. Can recommend. There we are, Katie with a product recommendation and a reason only a cycling journalist could have. That or somebody who's got a mate who has a truck that things often fall off the back of. Okay, that is it for this CT Recommends episode. If there is a product category you would like us to delve into, let us know in the comments below. Also do the usual subscribe, like, all that nonsense if you haven't already. And until next time, thank you for watching and enjoy your riding.